heart of the Arabian desert, a remarkable gathering unites ancient tradition and 21st century sportsmanship. The hosts are Bedouin tribesmen, their guests, the cream of the world's endurance riders, invited to the United Arab Emirates for one of the world's toughest equestrian events. It's a rare chance for the visitors to ask the locals how best to tackle the difficult desert course. Riding here in the desert is quite different to riding around the rest of the world. There's no mountains. Yeah, it's a little uh, flat races and uh, it's the fastest uh, race in the world. Sometimes morning it's cold and he uh, will be after four hours. It's uh, the weather different, you know. It's like a surprise for everybody. Tonight, the visitors can enjoy a desert that's cool and welcoming, but it'll be very different in two days' time when they compete against the local riders and each other in a grueling physical and psychological challenge. The international field that's gathered at Al Wathba, south of Abu Dhabi, is testimony to one of the fastest growing sports in the world. The UAE's President's Cup is now a key event in the equestrian calendar. Endurance sport is the sport of horse and rider competing over a said distance between 80 kilometers and 160 kilometers in the shortest, fastest time. It's tough. So it's actually a tough sport and like you have to think when you're riding. You start from a central vet gate and you would do loops of 30 to 40 kilometers, then check the horse that he's fit to continue and then do the next loop. So normally in a 160, which is a 100 mile race, you would have six loops. And the aim is that the longest loop is the first while the horse is fit and fresh and the shortest loop is normally the last. It's like a marathon race with very strict veterinary control of the horses, but at the end of the day it is a race. Endurance racing is, as for me, a fun sport. Everybody can do it and you can do it with every horse. It's a lot of time spent conditioning. I, I think the conditioning is almost more important in spending the time with your horse than the actual rides, maybe. In recent years, under the stewardship of His Highness Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayyan, the UAE has led the world in the development of endurance racing. This year, riders from every continent will compete, including members of gold and silver medal winning teams from this year's Endurance World Championships. Most have trained for months for this event, but it's a very tough course, and only a fraction of the 100 riders who start will finish. Race day and in the cool of the Arabian night, the teams make their last minute preparations. Hello. The next 10 hours will be as much about mental and emotional toughness as it is about physical fitness. It's an hour before dawn as the convoy of horsepower, old and new, snakes its way out into the desert. Ahead of them, 100 miles, 160 kilometers of the most inhospitable terrain on the planet.
midway through the first 33-kilometre leg, local experience is paying off for the Al Reef stables, with number one, Sheikh Hazza bin Zayed Al Nayyan, out in front. Number three, Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed Al Maktoum on his Mount Iska is also looking strong. And Australian riders, Meg Wade and Christy McGaffin, are keeping pace with the leaders. But while the Emirates riders are doing well, it's an Italian who's fastest at the end of the first leg. Fausto Fiocucci's ride time of 1 hour 25 is fast. Could this be the year that the elusive seven-hour barrier is broken for the first time? Even at this early stage, it's important to cool the horses right down, to drop their heart rates, and get them to relax as much as possible before the next leg. The vets complete the first of the checks that the horses must undergo between stages. At this first gate, only four horses are disqualified by the vets, but that number will rise steadily as the race continues. You know, the, the veterinary commission is here to take care of the horse. They are the horse's lawyers, so to speak. So any horse getting into trouble will be stopped here, at this stage, at the vet gate. The vet is taking the first pulse now. Using this machinery, he is show down there, it's 57. Then he send the horse for a trot, watching the gate from behind. Horse turns around, watch the gate from front, judging the gate, the movement. And, and if we put all these findings together, you can give a certain metabolic score. We just finished the first leg, it was 33 kilometers. It was a nice leg, it was cool. It's feeling good, it sands a little deeper than I expected in parts, um, but it's going good. My horse just started very nice, not pulled me much. Started with him very good. And we see the race in, in the fourth loop. Well, this is the first stage, the first leg's over, and uh, the veterinarians have uh, eliminated him from the competition uh, due to lameness. So, um, it happens in this sport. Number 55, you may go. Hal Hall is one of just four riders eliminated at the first gate. The second leg is only slightly shorter than the first, a flat 32 kilometers. And although it's still early morning, Temperatures are starting to climb. Despite the experience and knowledge of the local riders, the Italian Fausto Fiocucci is still in front. Followed closely by 63, Mubarak Khalifa bin Shafaya riding Kaysan Faraza. As the horses push on through the increasing heat, the role of the support teams becomes ever more important. By the end of the second leg, the Italian has increased his lead to two minutes, but the rest of the leading pack are not far behind, and even in the vet gates, the teams can make up time if their horses recover more quickly. After two legs, there's disappointment for Sheikh Hazza bin Zayed Al Nayyan when his horse Eminence is disqualified for lameness. His Highness is one of 21 to fail at the second gate, a quarter of the original starting field are now out of the race. By the start of the 30 kilometer third loop, temperatures are climbing into the 90s. This is where mental preparation starts to count. 
where riders must read and understand their horses to set exactly the right pace. The Italian is being pressed hard by some of the local riders and he knows they're used to these conditions and can withstand a faster pace. In the middle of the field, Australian Christy McGaffin is maintaining her position. Fiocucci has held his lead to the end of the third leg, but by a much reduced margin. And the Italian has been pushing his horse. It takes his team over 20 minutes to get his horse's heart rate down to a level that will be passed by the vets. Now I trained very well my horse, now I go more slowly. While number 22, Cameo Zania, ridden by Yusef Ahmed Al Balushi, is cooled and ready for vetting in just five minutes. The leaders are now halfway through and the race is still wide open. There are 65 kilometers to go and temperatures will climb a lot higher. While the leaders rest, the back markers are way out in the desert and some still have to finish the second leg. The leaders must use this break wisely. Ahead of them is stage four, the toughest circuit of the day. They call it Tora Bora here and all up and down, all the way. It's actually getting pretty hot, yeah, and the roads are drying out. Up down, up down, it's too much, it's too much, you know. This is Tora Bora, the toughest section of the race. 24 kilometers of undulating terrain, ridden at the hottest part of the day. Nearly half of the starting field has already dropped out or been disqualified by the vets. This is where the skill and knowledge of the local riders pays off. The front runners are now all from the Emirates. Number 74 is Al Wathba stable rider, Marzouk Salem Al Mari, followed closely by two Al Reef riders, Dr. Jabbar Bitar and Mata Ali Al Hamadi. It's not just the horses that are finding the going tough in this difficult fourth leg of the race. Tora Bora takes its toll on the field. The Italian who led the first three legs looks as if he's reached the end of the road. But some of the other international riders are hanging in there, including Stefan Chazelle of France and 111, Katie Smith from Britain. The hills of the 24-kilometer Tora Bora leg will claim nearly half the remaining field, reducing the number of teams left in the race to just 29. As the field returns from the Tora Bora loop, they've been riding for five and a half hours and covered nearly 120 kilometers. This could be the most testing and difficult vet check for the remaining 56 horses. For those still left in the race, there's relief that the toughest leg is now behind them. I'm feeling good about finishing, but there's still a long list to go.
There's nowhere else in the world that has the facilities that the UAE have. It's superb, it's first class and it caters for welfare of the horse. I think it's a, it's a good event because people come here from overseas, learn about the country, see the people, especially in UAE, and UAE welcome for everyone. For the remaining 19 horses, it's the moment of truth, the final lap. The field is led out by Marzouk Salem Almari, followed closely by Yusuf Ahmed Al Balushi and Mata Ali Al Hamadi. It's the shortest and fastest lap, with the final vet check on their return. In this, the final loop, it's the local stables who dominate the field, still looking strong after 143 kilometers of desert. In the final few kilometers, it's the two local stables, Al Wathba and Al Reef, who'll battle it out for the title. Finally, after a ride time of seven hours, the leaders approach the finish line, and it's Al Wathba stables Marzouk Salem Almari riding Ro Fabiola who carries his country's colours to victory in a record time of seven hours and two minutes. It's an outstanding achievement for the team. <laughs> Local riders take the top three places. Second and third places both go to the Al Reef stables. <laughs> it's extraordinary. It's a weird feeling. The fourth round was a bit grueling, but, but now I can't believe it. But although the teams are celebrating, there's still a final vet check before the winner is confirmed. It's a tense few minutes. But then, victory is confirmed for the Al Wathba stables of Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nayyan. And all that remains is for the winners to claim their prizes. Third place for the Al Reef stables is Yusuf Ahmed Al Balushi. Second, also for Al Reef, is Mata Ali Al Hamadi. And the winner for the Al Wathba stables is Marzouk Salam Al Mari. While the hosts celebrate their victory, Others are still finishing, and the first of the international riders completes the course. I come from France, uh, I'm a breeder of uh, endurance horses, and so today it was my first big ride in uh, UAE, so uh, this morning we, we start and we know nothing you know, about, about this type of race, so I was starting a little bit slow. And uh, I think after the second way gate, I was something like in 65 or 70 position. And I come and I finish 12 position, so it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Great Britain's Katie Smith rode strongly and did well to finish. Quite tough, um, tougher than I expected it to be, because I've ridden in Dubai a few times, which is very different. But uh, obviously 10 times different to what it is in England. For others, the day is much longer. Oh, it's now... Um 20 minutes after 6 and the day had been really great. My horse is going well, not too fast. We are always on the back of the bunch. <laughs> 
one last round to go. And long after the victory parties are over, there'll be some who can celebrate just finishing the world's toughest horse race.